Hey everybody, um, Zach here. Just wanted to make a quick fact correction before the episode starts. Um, it has been pointed out by one of our listeners, um, and thank you for you know letting us know that I fell for a goof. I have made a gaffe, an embarrassing error, a boner, if you will, um, towards the second half of this episode. I don't remember exactly when um, I present a, I read a translation of a tablet between. Uh, Crawley and Aziripal and I don't know how I missed it but that is a reference to Good Omens it was a goof even the the sort looking back at the source the Tumblr that I was reading from it was a goof it's such a Tumblr goof too um so I don't know how I missed that uh an embarrassing uh mistake on my part um thank you for listening thank you for pointing that out um the rest of the episode is still great so please don't hold it against me and keep on listening and I will you know, make sure to not do that again in the future, uh, because as much as we like to have fun, I also like to present, make sure we present actual factual information. Um, so, yeah, um, keep on li- listening, and um, I hope I hope you I hope you enjoy the the I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. Okay, thanks. Bye. Um, uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, uh, um, um, uh, um, um, uh, um, um, uh, um, Grundle. Ash and Zach are super smart. They went to college and learned a bunch of stuff. And Bo and Andrew didn't go to college because that's the way life goes sometimes. What happens when you put them together and you try to make them learn? Grab your friends, let's listen together on Get Dumped On an Info Dump Podcast. Welcome to Get Dumped On an Info Dump Podcast. My name is Andrew. That is Bo. Did you want to say hey. something? Oh, hey. That is Zach. Hi. Hey. Oh. <laughs> and that is Ash. Howdy. Welcome to the podcast where four friends get together and one of them dumps their special interest knowledge on the other ones. It's a goofing, gaffing, good time full of great, g- g- uh, running out of G words, help. Gothnakis. Help. help uh, thank gregarious. You. Gregarious. Goofballs. Um, g- goofballs um, and. Grundle. G- gr- no. <laughs> <laughs> so close. Uh, so today's Grandiose. episode will be hosted by Zach. Grandiose episode will be hosted by Zach. It is on Mesopotamian nonsense, is what I was told, but. I sure that, that I'm sure that he will go farther into it than uh, what I just said. So Zach, why don't you take us away? Hi everyone. And dump on us. Uh, yeah, I'll dump. I know. I was thinking, what if we instead of calling it an info dump podcast, what if we call it the info dump podcast? Or is that a little Wait, like too late for change? Uh, it's a hell of a time to rebrand. Yeah. Hmm. Barnaby, can you get off my desk? The cat's on my desk. Hey, buddy. Let's move. Uh, if anyone hears purring during the episode, that's the cat. Um, and me, but <laughs> Bo's a big purr, big purr guy. Take us away, Zach. Oh my god! Oh my god! So for this episode, I had really wanted to, or well, I came into it with the plan of finding a bunch of ancient writing that was just goofs and jokes and um, all sorts of ridiculous stuff like that. There's a lot of really great um, Roman graffiti that I wanted to talk about from Pompeii that's all about dicks and fucking. Um, and there are a lot of Nordic runes that, you know, the 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 Norse, they got all over Europe. And so there's like runes carved into uh, the Hagia Sophia in, in Turkey that just say like Haftan was here and just a, a bunch of really funny stuff like that. But there's one story that I was um, really focused on including, and I researched it first. And the more that I researched it, the more that I realized that it's like an entire saga depicting the life of one particularly very shitty guy. Um, And so the more that I learned about it, the more I realized that this is enough for an entire episode on its own. So that's what we're doing, baby. Let's get going. Um, so the story that I'm going to be telling you is written in cuneiform and it is from Ur, uh, which is a city in Mesopotamia, which is in modern day Iraq. And cuneiform is the system of writing that they use there. That is one of the oldest forms of writing. If you said that it was the first form of writing, you probably wouldn't be super correct, but you'd be correct enough that only really pedantic people would correct you on it. And it's from about 3500 BC, 
like around five and a half thousand years ago is when it really started. And most of our tablets come from maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred years after that. Um, it was written in this kind of series. The letters are basically made out of wedges, uh, which were kind of pressed into unfired clay tablets using these little styluses that were made out of reeds. It's really cool the way that that clay tablets are written on. Like when you watch someone do it, it looks really satisfying to do. It's basically just people just poking, uh, poking reeds into a clay tablet. And it's pretty neat. So... Just, I guess, background information. Like I said, we're talking about some that were found in Ur. A lot of people would say that Ur is the first city. Again, it's like you're not entirely correct if you say that, but you're correct enough that only really pedantic people would correct you on it. Man, I say uh, that all the time that it's the first city. Like, I go around. You're people, so pedantic I right know. now. I, I, the, first, the, the first time I meet somebody, I'm like, hey, do you know what the first city is? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> and I say, then I say, Ur, right? Am I wrong? Yeah, er. You er. are. Is it you are? Okay, I was going to say, is it E-R-R or you are? So thank you for clarifying. Yep, it your. is you are. Your. There's another city oh. nearby called Uruk, um, which That's is also crazy. really old as well. Like, you know, when somebody, you're like texting somebody and then you just text back your mom, you are M-O-M, it's you are. Oh, <laughs> so that's where that comes from. Uh, exactly. That's where, yeah, the abbreviation you are comes from. Absolutely, 100%, without doubt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your mom is is someone is an ancient ship host from somebody talking back in the day, saying where does my, where does your mom live? And they go your mom. <laughs> not it's, it's, it's not your mom. It's her mom. Your mom. <laughs> her mom. Yeah. I think we'll be talking about that later on. Ur was uh, yes, yeah, so Ur was pretty cool. Mesopotamia was awesome. They developed a lot of stuff for the first time, and so the cuneiform fertile, the writing on these tablets. Present. What? Yeah, the, the fertile the crescent. The fertile crescent. It used to be right on the the uh, fertile crescent. That's what. Yeah, that's what they call the area where like agriculture began. Yeah, pretty much. Oh. So like Iraq and the area of Iraq that it's in is really or Iraq. Sorry, the area of Iraq that it's in is very dry now. But um, six thousand years ago, it was actually super super fertile and very green and uh, the very good for doing agriculture and it was in between two rivers and uh the tigris and the euphrates rivers and it was um right on the persian gulf but the water levels have since gone down and it's no longer on the water um it's a few miles inland now hmm. cool and so it was a really big trade there's a lot of like trade uh and commerce going on and this is at the kind of beginning of when people really formalized trading with each other. Um, and so it, one of the main theories for why cuneiform writing developed in this region is specifically for business records and receipts and keeping track of this sort of this, administrative this sort of needs. Thing. Yeah. Administrative needs basically. So a couple, just like two more things before I get started is that a lot of these tablets and like the letters as they were written, they start with, speak to person X and X person X or person Y says instead of to and from because not everyone was actually literate. And so basically people had scribes on retainer that they used to dictate. They dictated whatever they wanted to say and the scribes would write it down. And then the recipient scribes would read them to the recipient. So sometimes there are like instructions on like how to say things um, like you should say this kindly or something like that. Little Make notes. sure when you call him a bitch, you really put some stank on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like tone indicators. Yeah, kind of. I like that. I yeah. think that's pretty cool. These are from the rain. These tablets we're going to be talking about are from the reign of the king Remsen, who ruled Ur between 1822 and 1763 BCE. So they're from some point in between that. They're a little less than 4,000 years old. That's a long um, fucking time ago, man. Yeah. It's, uh, Holy crap. And this is really going to humanize people from a long time ago for you, because what we're dealing with here is in our first dumper chump, I'm going to give you three things. One of them is correct. Is this the first recorded one star Yelp review? Is this the first recorded meme or the first recorded limerick? Okay, so, well, this is this is just a shot in the dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a shot. Because you've, you've given us no information. Yeah, but what, uh, no so information. Meme, meme review or, sh- or uh, limerick. If. If this episode is going to be long, 
I don't think it'd be a limerick, right? Because limericks are usually pretty short. Yeah, whatever word you're short saying right memes. Now. So let's go with the first one, I'm thinking. Yeah. If it's yes. a one-star review, then it has to be that. That's absolutely correct. I don't even I, know why I bothered making so this into good a question. This help. We're getting good at this. So we do better when you give us no information. Granted, that yeah. was, that, that was all, that was, it was all you. I was just agreeing with you. Hey, you agreeing with me helped me, so thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> all so, about enabling here in this podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, so A, 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 the first recorded uh angry yelp review is correct and it's a pretty great one the this text is kind of a meme online so you may have heard about this one or heard people reference it and the listeners may have heard about this before um you talked about it on this podcast i sure i did i i don't remember i talk yes. about a lot of things oh, on this podcast. is it the one that you're talking about the the grain thing uh, no but you're close I, I, you're close the straw thing or is that no. when he called me a pig? <laughs> there's back. no pig. There's no pig calling in this one, but there is a pretty good insult later on. Oh, cool. Okay, oh, yay. I'm in. Can't wait Let's to hear go. It. <laughs> um, so this is a complaint against a copper merchant named Aya Nitzir from a customer who thought he was mistreated and given shitty copper and was pretty copper, cheesed that's about what it. it. Was okay. Yeah, I remember yeah, this. It's copper. So this uh, he. If you've seen, um, I highly recommend that everybody look up pictures of this tablet that I'm going to be reading from. It's in the British Museum because, of course, it is. Uh, but he, this, the dude who wrote this tablet, crammed in as much as possible. Like he What's was using every single, every single, uh, um, centimeter, s- millimeter, yeah, every single millimeter of this clay tablet. Um, I'll look at it right now. What's called? It's, uh, I don't remember exactly what it's called. But how? It's you just told you everyone to, to look, look at it and then literally tell told me to look it up. Was. I'm all ready I'll to post links. a link to it. I'll, we're, we're, we have to start including sources. And so I'll have a link to it in the sources when we upload this episode. Um, so we have but, to wait? We have to wait for it to post to be able to see Is it this, Zach? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. If you look it up on Wikipedia, it has a picture of it as well. I I'm googled, so mad at you right now. I googled, I googled Aya Nasir tablet. E a n a s i r. Oh, there we go. Got it. Yeah, don't look at the Wikipedia because I'm going to be reading it. Uh, reading it, but I'll just look at pictures. Yeah, just look at pictures. It is crammed in with those letters. Um, wow, that's writing. That just looks like that does not look like writing. That, How I mean, so, big is it? It's not that big. I think it's only a few inches tall. That's really that's writing. That looks like that looks like someone took a fork and just like smushed it on there a bunch of times. Oh, well, it wasn't a fork. It was a reed. <laughs> yeah, but how do you read that? Huh? Uh, each one of the little uh, each one of the different symbols represents a syllable. And, Yo, how, um, the, how the hell did someone figure that out? They some if I saw this thing and I'm walking in the forest and I pick this thing up. There's no way that I'm like, this is writing. It is, if I pick this thing up, I'm like, this is a weird rock. It is about four and a half inches high and a little less than two inches wide. Wow. It's like a smartphone. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, that's have where, you heard of that's the... That's where Steve you, Jobs got the idea from. <laughs> yeah, he was like, the, oh, my gosh. I hate, I hate copper dealers, too. What? iPhones. Yeah, fucking copper dealers. <laughs> iPhones. <laughs> <laughs> They're copper in iPhones. I need higher quality like, copper for my yeah, iPhones. Like a lot. <laughs> Let me Google um, is there copper in iPhones. You've heard of the Rosetta Stone? Have you heard of the Rosetta Stone? The book? Yeah, Wait, is that a real thing? It's how I'm learning Spanish. Yeah, oh, so it's a real thing. It's a real artifact. It's a real thing. No shit. Um, I've no I'd never And you're gonna be blown away when you that. when you hear about what it actually is. Yeah, the Rosetta oh, no. Stone is a stone that was found. Um, it's a stone tablet that was found in Egypt. And basically, it has the same text in Egyptian hieroglyphs, cuneiform, and Greek script. And so the people oh. who found it were able to, because they knew how to read Greek, were able to use that to figure out how to read the cuneiform. And hieroglyphics to an extent. And the hieroglyphics. So it was, it's like one of the most important artifacts to have ever been found, specifically because it gave people like the starting point for learning how to translate cuneiform and Egyptian hieroglyphs. Wow, who the hell wrote that? Real big props to whoever, whatever committee put that together. Real good job. Dude, hey, it like, yeah, yeah holy me. shit. I'm looking at a picture of this Thanks, right Bo. now. This thing is fucking welcome. crazy. Welcome. Mm-hmm. This thing is huge. 
It's big. Yeah, it's it's nuts. It's also oh. in the British Museum. <laughs> I um had an archaeology Did professor once who worked at the British Museum, and he said that they have just like a shitload of replicas of the Rosetta Stone in the basement, just like hanging out for whatever reason. But he's like, he said there was like fifty of them. Dude, that is so. That's so fucking cool. I had no idea that, that was a real. Th- I just thought Rosetta Stone was just some, you know. And so it's the program that some that corporation they use to teach languages because that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, that makes sense. That's that, that's so fucking cool. And Andrew, I, uh, Pro- yeah, props to like back in the day, whoever wrote this shit. Sorry, what's up? I I got your answer. There is copper in iPhones. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah, you. yeah. Sorry. I, mean, I didn't ask the question. That was Zach's question, but thank you for answering it. Hmm. Oh, Zach, Zach. Hey, Zach. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, I yes. got the an- I got the answer to your question. There is <laughs> copper oh, in an iPhone? All right, carry on. Oh, oh, Bo, you're you're the you're the secret gem of this podcast. I love you. <laughs> oh wow, I'm Actually, more of a hey. I'm more of a Rosetta Stone. <laughs> hey, brrr. it turns out that I'm an idiot. Hold on, the Rosetta Stone uh-huh. doesn't have kinetic. Uh-huh. It. it has like a proto oh, Arabic Bo, on it. Bo, mm-hmm. quick, tell 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 him that you already knew that. Zach, Debunking your own podcast. That, I knew that. Uh, in I real time. <laughs> I was being, <laughs> I was being, um, fuck, what was the word? God damn it. Um, never mind. I'm scared. No. Um, <laughs> what was the word he was dropping? Pre- predictic? Yeah. But, Pre- yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, well, there were other tablets that people were, that had things i think after the rosetta stone they found other tablets i don't know i don't want to be permanently on record now just guessing about how we can learn how to read ancient languages um but hey turns out the rosetta stone is still pretty cool anyway and it is how we learn how to read egyptian hieroglyphs so that's worth remembering back onto it um this is a complaint against ayan Nazir, who was a copper merchant the tablet's now in the British Museum. And so from what we've been able to figure out about Ea Nitzir is that at one point in time, he was a well-respected merchant in Ur, and he was a member of a merchant's guild who traded out of Dilmun, which I may be mispronouncing, Dilmun, maybe? Yeah, you as in tube, Dilmun, which is a region <laughs> further down uh, the Persian Gulf. I found a pronunciation guide of the, how to pronounce the vowels, uh, and I copied it oh, onto cool. my notes documents that I can <laughs> remember. He was uh, a merchant's guild uh, in the merchant's guild trade out of Dilmun. And so from the records that we've been able to find and everything, all the ever evidence that we've been able to figure out about this guy's life is that he was, he had good credit at the beginning of his career. He was being fronted copper that he could sell. But as time went on, he started spending too much time in Dilmun and abandoning his promises to clients or just not oh, delivering no. on promises. Buddy. Not paying enough attention to his existing clients in Ur. Buddy, what are you doing? That's not, that's not how you make money. That's not, that's not how you create, you know, a, a business that thrives, bro. Yeah. It's, it's okay, just bad so business bad. practice. Uh, we'll, figure, we'll, we'll get into it. And so one last note before I get started is that these translations are obviously not my own. When when I could find them, I used translations that I found on a Tumblr blog called Slightly Alive Translations at mostlydeadlanguages.tumblr.com. It's run by uh-huh. uh, somebody with a PhD in languages of the ancient Near East. And I like their translations because they are they make them a little more colloquial. And so they they read better than the really like formal translations. Um, and translation is an art anyway. So. It's more of a translation is more of an art than a science. So I like the way that these translations go. Um, and so when I when I had the option to use those, I used translations from there. Then I used translations from a book uh, that was written by a guy named Lee Lehman, Foreign Trade in the Old Babylonian Period by a guy named W.F. Lehmans. Um, and then I also used the Archaeology of the Arabian Gulf circa 5000 to 323 BC by Michael Rice. And if there was not translations in there, I found a few more at a website called archibab.fr, which has basically like the most rudimentary and formal translations of the tablets. So if you feel like being a nerd and looking up more translations of tablets and learning more about this, I will uh, list those in a document and you can check those out later. 
But now let's get right into it and read the tablet we've been talking about. So this is um, Speak to a Ear from Nani. This guy's name is Nani. When Nani? you came here, Nani, N-A-N-N-I. When you came here, you said, I will give Gimiel Sin good ingots. You came here and you said it to me, but you didn't do it. You supplied huh? bad ingots to my messenger and you said, either take it or get lost. Are you really oh. going to treat me this way, insulting me like that? I, I even guy. sent. Oh, I, I even this sent. Support. Tear him, tear him to shreds, Nani. Yeah. Get him. Yeah, I know. To I shreds. even sent gentlemen like us to receive my financial capital, but you simply insulted me. Once or twice, you even sent them back empty-handed through enemy territory. Do you think that anyone else among the merchants of Dulmun has acted this way to me? But insult you, to you even insult my messenger. Wow. Just because you never you insult took, the messenger. Never yeah. insult the messenger. Never insult him, you never shoot him. Mm-mm. <laughs> Precisely. Not. Oh, no. Just because you took a pound of silver from my estate, you think you can talk to me like this. Yet I myself paid half a ton of copper to the palace on your behalf, and Shumi Abum also paid half a ton of copper. I only <laughs> held back what we recorded in our contract at the Temple of Shamash. And how you have acted toward me for that copper? You withheld my financial capital in enemy territory. You owe me my financial capital, paid in full, into my account. You'll learn that around here, I will not accept poor quality copper. From now on, I'll select it in my own courtyard, piece by piece, and take it myself. And because you've insulted me, I reserve the right to reject it. Damn. This, this guy is operating on the assumption that Anitzir is going to come back. And I yeah. think that he has skipped town for good. <laughs> it sounds like he's. He sounds like he's the music band guy who sold them a bunch of instruments and is fucked off. Yeah. Uh, Harold Hill. And then he ro- yeah. roped his friend into it. He was like, "But this guy is just taking everyone to the cleaners." Yeah, Shumi Abum paid half a ton of copper. That's a lot of fucking copper. It's a lot that's of a copper. That's a lot of copper. Half that's, a ton? Like, that's a thousand pounds. Yeah, apparently, because he says that uh, he get that he owed him a pound of silver and he repaid it with a ton of copper, half a ton of copper twice. So I don't know. It does a pound of silver equal a ton of copper. That's a lot. Are their measurements like the same as ours? Does their ton mean something different? Um, this Possibly. is converted. Yeah, uh, okay. This, this Tumblr, bl- Tumblr blog that I have seen um, this is, so this is the one from slightly alive languages. And from what I've seen, they do convert the, the measurements. Okay. Okay. Well, dang. That's, that tells me that copper was uh, really worthless back then. Well, copper yeah. was, was easier to find, right? You just, just pick it up it's out of the also, It's a lot easier to work with. Work with, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's softer, right? Or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know it much has about a copper. Lower so melting I point, I think? Yeah, you can, you can work copper like cold. You don't even have to heat it up sometimes. According to this website that I found, um, a pound of silver ranges from 50 to 150 times the value of a pound of copper. Okay, that makes sense. This, obviously, this is current and 4,000 years later, but still, that means that a Nasir is a huge dick. Yeah, he's a bitch. Uh, we're gonna, <laughs> it, so um, we don't have any evidence of how a Nasir responded to Nani, but we do have another letter from Nani to a Nasir. Um, oh, he's not, <laughs> oh, he did more than one? Yeah, it's not. Oh no, I, I, I don't know if this is from before the last letter or after, because it makes there could be a long, a long uh, correspondence between them. But he says, and this is one of the dry translations, so it sounds a little worse about what you wrote to me. Now I have sent Gimiel Sin to you about the copper from my purse and Erebam Sin's purse. Put it under seal for him and let him bring it to me. Give him very good copper. Hopefully the copper in your care has not gone out. If you so he's a give me the good copper if you even have it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you even have any good copper, you dumb bitch. Wow. That's I love that. So that's the best one. I kind of started off strong, but there is a whole saga here. Next is the a series. More? Oh, there's more. There's a lot. So huh. next we have a series of letters. We have a series of letters from another guy um, whose name is Arbituram. Arbituram? I don't know how they emphasized syllables in Wait, Akkadian. It, to, 
a, another letter to a Nessier from another yes. different guy. What yeah, he's the, involved dude, in all of this. This guy's a fucking he's an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> writing this guy letters that have lasted four thousand years. Um. So. These are from a guy named Arbiturum to Aenitsir, who seems to be writing on behalf of a guy whose name is Niganana, um, who is apparently owed plenty of copper by Aenitsir. Classic. And so these ones aren't as good all the way through, so I'm just going to read excerpts. So from one of them, he says, The silver and its profit, give it to Niganana. I have made you issue a tablet, which I think is like a receipt in this case, in this context. Why have you not given the copper? If you do not give it, I will bring in your pledges. So this oh. is basically saying I'm going to call in your mortgage and I'm going to call in your debts if you don't give give the silver give right? his or the copper. copper. Yeah, he's basically like I'm going to call the bank and make them foreclose on you. <laughs> oh, this is a Game of Thrones shit. So then there's another one from Arbiturum. Speak to Aya Nitsir, thus says Arbiturum. Why have you not given the copper to Niganana? The work you have done is good. The copper Give it to Niganana. <laughs> then, <laughs> then another person, another person gets pulled into the saga. And so this is from a guy named Imquisin. Speak to Aya Netzir, thus says Imquisin, may Shamash bless your life. And so for a little context, Shamash was the Mesopotamian god who was like a sun god and he was the witness to financial oaths so he was like he was basically <laughs> oh, like god. Yeah, oh god yeah it's basically so that, like, that, is that an insult that what that person just said or like i think it's a little like, shady they it's talk like about, hey do the shit or the god's gonna be pissed at you bro pretty much they talk a bit about uh, shamash comes into a lot of these uh a lot of these letters and i'm pretty sure that like any sort of commerce has to be done like you know I will swear to Shamash that I am being honest in this in this transaction. You know, he's the one that you oh. that you be honest to. Speak to Aenitzir, thus says Imquisin. May Shamash bless your life. Give good copper <laughs> under seal to Niga Nana. Now you have had one issue ten shekels of silver. In order that your heart shall not be troubled, give good copper to him. Do you not know how tired I am? Oh. And when you arrive with Itsurabi, oh. take it away and give it to Niga Nana. <laughs> Oh, that took a turn. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> so I really think the... that saying like if you start your thing with the god of you know all transactions is watching you right now, like that's right. that's like a double sided like, hey buddy, I hope this transaction goes well, but also you better fucking do this right. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that this is like a uh, like an old southern woman being like, oh bless your heart, yes, which actually means fuck say. you. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Like, like, so that's as far as we know how the Nigan or, saga. Or went. I wonder if it was oh, like a for the love of God type of like, yeah, that sounds for the that love sounds, of God. Give me my fucking copper. Exactly. Yeah. I'm so fucking tired. <laughs> so then we've got another one. Speak to Ian ear. Thus says Appa. The copper we're, of mine. No, give it Colin, to Nigan. Were all of these were all these found in like the same like place uh, like they the were found in or the same or were they, they found, found in the same place i'll talk to you a little they, bit about were they found um on top of a skeleton <laughs> of, of a of, of a copper clear copper dealer who just got these thrown at him until he died crushed by the weight of his bad reviews yeah they were all found in the same place okay i'll tell you more about it later on so, speak to Aenitsir, thus says Appa, the copper of mine, give it to Niganana, good copper, in order that my heart shall not be troubled, and one copper kettle which can hold fifteen ka of water, and ten minas of other copper, send to me. I will pay silver for it. So, uh, okay, that wasn't too bad. Is this that was just, that sounded like, that sounded like an order. This might be the start of the whole situation. Maybe uh, the tablets are out of order. They're, they're not dated, so we kind of have to guess at what order they were in. Because the, these are all referencing this other guy, Niganana, right? Yeah. Is this him hiring a bunch of scribes to keep writing to this guy? Or like, is, are these other people that like he's made deals with? I think that, yeah, I, I, I think that. That are reliant on the copper. Yeah. From what I can tell and from what I'm pretty much guessing is that Niganana is probably 
hiring people to write to basically trying to get as many people as possible to harass a and into getting him what he needs okay as far as i can tell i understand the tactic you gotta that's try like people that's like <laughs> that's like people brigading online these days where they're like you know somebody posts a video of somebody being shitty to like a a, a waiter at a restaurant and then the internet somehow finds out who that person is. And finds out their and social they security their number. Name, yeah. And they call their, their boss. The mud. <laughs> they call their boss. The boss gets quiet. Yeah. And then the person posts, posts a video or a tweet that's like, that's not me. I was, I was having a bad day. I promise. It seems like this. I wonder if he has an apology tablet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if anyone's curious, a ka is an ancient Babylonian liquid measure equal to the volume of a cube whose dimensions are one hand breadth in length. Which is, huh. I like that. Now, with, you know, now isn't you know, Ka no also an Egyptian god? Yes, but words can mean different things in different languages. I just wanted to sound smart. I swear, that's fine. That's that's totally cool. Ka is an Egyptian god. I'm, I made my point. I know. I think it's. I know Ra is an Egyptian god. There's, oh, there's the a ka, lot of Egyptian gods. The Ka is is in opposition to the Ba, and ah! those are the parts. <laughs> those are the parts of a soul. Oh, the ka, the ba, and the ankh. Yeah. Hmm. The Are bonk? The parts. The music? <laughs> yeah. Ka, ba, onk. It's onk. It, together it's, it's, it's kabonk. It's A-N-K-H, I think. Also, I don't, I, I don't want to take away some of your steam here, but I, when you told me to look up this tablet thing, I made sure to not look at any of the other Google images of this tablet other than just like the one of the tablet itself. But I happen to scan my eyes down a little bit, and there are so many current memes about this. Oh yeah, it's it. it, it there are so many memes. There's, There's like a, a whole subreddit the, based the, on the Virgin it. Nani versus the Chad Anasir. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's T-shirts. This is like this is ridiculous. There's I found a keychain on Etsy that's like a, a, a like a resin, a, like a resin <laughs> key keychain that's like high quality copper from A and it's here. <laughs> <laughs> I want I want a T-shirt that says like I I did a copper deal with a and it's here and all I got was this shitty T-shirt. <laughs> There's a T-shirt here that says best quality copper. Don't listen to Nani. <laughs> 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 I love it. So I've got a couple more letters. This guy was just guy was hated within the community. This he was just guy. peddling. I, mean, I was just I'm scamming people out of copper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I take back my this poor guy, uh, this, this this man who probably deserved it. Who knows? I don't know. This free and hunk of junk. Yeah, he, he If someone took the time to write it down on stone, you really fucked up. Clay. It was clay. Clay. So yeah, something that will last that long. <laughs> so it, it's like if you think about it, if the world ends via apocalypse, whatever apocalypse you choose today. Tweets, Facebook posts, even letters, Yelp reviews, that shit ain't staying. Data centers <laughs> wiped out from the face of the earth. However, clay tablets will still survive. The mm-hmm. angry so that's how pissed these people the are. The man typed up with a typewriter and nailed to someone's door. Mm-hmm. So next one is, uh, speak to Aya Netzir, thus says, Ili Idanam. The act that you did, is it good to you? <laughs> Since... Since illegible years, I had given you silver. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That was amazing. (laughs) Are you happy with yourself? Are you pleased? Are you you happy with that? Like, is that is that what you think is is okay for you? (laughs) You feel good about this, you son of a bitch. Oh my god! I love the act that you did. Is that good for you? (laughs) Is it good to you? I love that. Okay, sorry. Go on. This one has a few illegible parts, so. I'll just say, since illegible years, I had given you silver. With hostile intent, you are offering me low-quality copper. If you see fit, your copper and give me the silver and its interest. So it breaks up a little bit there. Um, With hostile intent, you are not willing to pay. Since it is not your intention, do not withhold the man. I don't know what that means, but it sounds kind of sexy. (laughs) Most importantly, I just love this one for the, the act that you did. Is it good to you? Was it good to you? Was, was it, it good, good for you? you? Did you like that? Was it good for you? Makes you feel, make you feel really good? <laughs> like Swindling like your man. friends? You think you're the cat's pajamas? <laughs> back to the previous episode. Yeah. And then uh, I have one, uh, then uh, two more. So then there's, speak to Aeonetsir, thus says Ilishu Tilasu. 
Okay, is so you? this is so when they say speak to Aeonitsir, this is like this is it That's like to Aeonitsir. Yeah, this is to Aeonitsir. So speak it's meant this to be speak to, to Speak this to okay. Aeonitsir. Thus is, says did, did this like did they have these posted somewhere in town that just like up on something? I'm I'm curious why it's it's said like that. Like speak to this person. This clearly is meant to be read not just by mm-hmm. Aeonitsir. Oh no, so Aeonitsir was probably illiterate. And so was probably the people who were sending him these letters. So literacy was like uh, was specialized, and so it was pretty much just the scribes who were able to read and write. So, so some Nitsir scribe had, had a a pack of so many complaints for this. Like this guy's breaking his back trying to find A and its ear just to read <laughs> yeah. him these tablets. So A and its ear probably had a scribe. He probably I don't know. Ew, it could have been. I don't want to make any sort of value judgments, but it could have been a slave that he had um, or just somebody who he employed who was a slave, uh, not a slave, a scribe. And so uh, Nani would say, would have a scribe too. Nani would have a scribe too and say, hey, scribe, write this down. I'm saying it. So this is why it's not a lawyer. It's um, a God, what are those? Notary. Yeah. It's like go to the notary. Oh, a notary. A, notary. So a notary. Is, is a notary. Is this is this the? the I think start of those are the people that they were talking about when he said, "I sent this man to you." Yeah, I think that's like that. Like that's kind of what they're talking about. Like I sent this guy in my stead to read this tablet to you, and you ignored him through enemy mm-hmm. territory. That's yes. fucking crazy. I think that's yeah. pretty cool, though. If that's if this, I'm just gonna say it here. It this is possibly the beginning of notaries. In general, I'm just well, going to say the beginning that. of writing. So I'm not saying that sense. it is, but it is possibly. I'm pulling a whole. I'm pulling a Fox News person right now. I'm not saying <laughs> that it's not, but I'm not saying that it is. But it could be. I'm just asking questions. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it would be. It basically it's written as instructions for the scribe to read it to the person that it's intended to be heard by. So speak to A and its ear. Thus says Ilishu Tilisu, and so Ilishu Tilisu is the guy who dictated the message to his scribe. Izia will come to you for Edenshin's copper. Show him 15 ingots, and then let him select six good ingots and give them to him. Act in such a way that Edenshin does not get upset. Uh, don't, you won't like him when he's angry. <laughs> Do not be, piss my friend off. He's easily piss-offable, especially when being handed copper <laughs> especially when he hasn't had his breakfast and he's a little hungry yeah, yeah. When you give him that many options of copper he gets pissed off just give him the good ones and then he'll be to death with the copper <laughs> <laughs> and the tablet um and so ilishu elitsu ilishu ilasu i some of these names I get a little goofed up in between translations and i don't know enough about kenya form to say why but there's little variations in spelling between the sources sometimes. And so I think that I'm pretty sure that uh, the guy who wrote this, Ilishu Tilisu, was Aeonisir's business partner. And that's oh. why he's kind of like his cooler. He's like, Aeonisir, I know you can kind of be a dick, but in this situation, you probably shouldn't be. Okay, so he's, he's got his back. Mm-hmm. So, so that last... was a threat. <laughs> yeah, it was basically a threat. That it, it's don't pull your scams. We got don't give them the copper. Yeah. Well, that's like when you introduce friend groups to other friend groups. You're, you <laughs> have to kind of like you got you got you to prep them. You got to be like, hey guys, you know when when Timmy comes over, don't be surprised if I have a British accent. Just go with it. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Or like don't don't talk about don't talk about uh the you know uh uh certain sports teams in front of him, or else he will burn your house down. Yeah. Exactly. He'll burn your house down. And so then. This one is this one is from both Aeonitsir and Ilisu Tilasu. So say to Shumun Libsi and the Zabur Dabu, which is a great, great the Zabur great name. Dabu. That's Zabur Dabu. Name right there. They knew what they were doing. <laughs> Aeonitsir and Ilishu Ilisu say, as for the situation with Mr. Shorty and Erisum Matim, who came here, don't be scared. Specifically don't be it's scared. A- it uses the word Karum, which is apparently translated to Shorty. So this is a colloquial okay. name for this guy, and they call so it Shorty. So they're making fun of this person. Yeah. Or is, it, is it, or is it like a mafia nickname? Or is it what's or is it ironic, like, yeah, or is he like 14 feet tall, but they're calling him Shorty? Ironically. That would be funny. Yeah. 
That would be really funny. Um, I made them enter the temple of the sun god and take an oath. So this is, may Shumash, may Shamash bless your heart. They said, we didn't come about these matters. We came for our businesses. I said, I will write to them, but they didn't believe me. He said, I had a quarrel, a quarrel with Mr. Shumun Libsy. He said to his partner, I took and you did not illegible. You didn't give to me. Within three days, I'll come to the city of Larsa. Also, I spoke to, uh, I spoke with Erasum Matim and said, what is your sign? I don't know what that oh. means. <laughs> I said, you're a Gemini, he, I you're a Taurus, what's had, going on there? He definitely has the tendencies of a Capricorn. I said to the kettle maker, go with Elam Gamil, the Zabar Dabu, and take the shortfall for me and put it in the city of Anima. Also, don't neglect your illegible. I wish that that was legible. Don't neglect your what? I want to know what he shouldn't be neglecting. Also, I have given the ingots that we talked about to the men. And then the PS is the funny part is don't be critical. Get the stuff from them. Don't worry. We'll come to you. So they've got their they are covering for their asses here. In some sort of shady business deal. Okay, that one didn't seem too hostile. More of just information. Well, it was from it was from them to the people they were scamming. Yeah, it was from them to the people that they were scamming, which is okay, basically... So they're trying to make it right. So this is yeah. the start of their apology tour. This is them trying to be like, okay, hold on. Be careful. Like, we'll be there. Don't hey, worry about that. Hey, don't worry about it. We, the the, the hey, copper is coming. I always we come it. through for you, man. No problem. You know, Mr. When Shorty... When have I ever let you down except for those hundred times? <laughs> It's like it's like a contractor when you hire a contractor and then they don't show up to your house for like nine years and then you're like, hey buddy, like your ladder's in my front yard. Like, get, what the fuck are you doing? And you're like, hey, I'll call. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'll show up. I'll show up. Don't worry. I'm it's literally in the car right now. It's like when someone says something mean to you and you are like, hey, don't be mean. And they're like, it was just a joke. Hey, calm, don't yeah, don't be yeah, too critical. On, you know, yeah, hey, yeah, just lighten, lighten, lighten up there, Nani. And these are all of the these are all the good letters in the A and it's your saga. Well, all the good ones and all the ones that are translated and worth reading on a podcast. Oh, okay. I yeah. thought you meant they get worse, like, 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 <laughs> no, no. You, was... you see that I have, have injured your mother. <laughs> <laughs> I have been able to, from what I've been able to figure out, there are 26 related tablets, but not all of them have been translated. And I don't know enough about it to translate them myself. There is one um, that indicates that he moved on from copper to dealing in secondhand clothing. Well, that's a hell there, of a change. Yeah, there's a there's a receipt. The, there's a tablet that is a receipt for fifty garments, which he paid about two pounds of silver for. Hmm, wonder who he, who he swindled hmm. that silver from. Where did yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, where'd you get that? Huh. How much copper did he have to lie and say that he was going to get for that? <laughs> Bunk ass copper dealer. Get out. Okay. So the He's next. selling him that swag, man. <laughs> <laughs> so the next. Uh, so let's, uh, let's talk about where these were all found. And I'm going to do about it in a dumper chump. So why Ooh. do we know so much about how Aya Netzir was a bitch? Is it <laughs> A. Ur had a house of business records that these were all kept in. B, he kept all of these letters in his house. Or C, a disgruntled customer was compiling a legal case against him and collecting evidence. Hey guys, Andrew here after the fact. Uh, just a heads up, Bo messed up his recording because he was watching the NFL draft, so we lost some of his audio. This included. So I'm going to go ahead and recap what he said here and probably for the rest of the episode. I'll do my best Bo impression. Uh, my name is Bo, and I think that uh, they were found in A.N. Netseer's house. Uh, I, my name is Bo. Okay, Bo out. All right, back to the podcast. That's the correct answer. No shit. Bo, look at us, dude. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Two for two. Bo and yeah. Andrew, smart as hell, didn't go to college. We don't need that shit. We, yeah, Bo we, and Andrew didn't we need to, know to go to wildly. college. You have good instincts for how shysty business people do their business, Bo. <laughs> Street smart, baby. Like, I, don't tr I don't trust this guy. I don't trust this copper yeah. guy. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, the 
wildly speculated way of thinking about this is that he enjoyed being a shifty con man and kept all of the complaint letters against him as like oh trophies God. or something. Every they, time, like, a, scri- he, he, every like, time a scribe comes on him, you know? before they leave, he's like, oh, hey, hang on a second. Can I just get that tablet real quick? <laughs> <laughs> okay like, hey, let me keep that and he's like he's laying awake at night you know with like a candle lit next to him. he's holding like a bunch of tablets in his bed and he's just he's like, like hey, laughing hey, like oh hey, yeah hey, i swindled hey, this guy hey. so good um idiot i remember i told him that my grandma was sick and that's why i couldn't give him the copper on time <laughs> we basically his his house was found during excavations at or and the 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 wall pattern the patterns of construction for his walls indicate that at some point Part of his house was absorbed into the house next door. So somebody took away part of his house. His house got smaller. Wow. And so that might be maybe that his shiftiness was finally getting the better of him. Uh, maybe, hopefully. Uh, then the other uh, great part Or he couldn't pay is, for it. Yeah, or he couldn't pay for it. Exactly. Well, yeah, because his that, shiftiness is getting the better of him. He sold someone the, the shitty part of his house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the leaky part. It's real good. That's real good. <laughs> Who, who wants yeah. this wing of my house? It's definitely not infested with ancient license. Stuff. Yeah, it's this is the bedroom, but the window is on the side where the sun rises, so you're always awake at dawn. <laughs> also, it's the where crow, I throw my garbage. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one um, where the chickens. It faces the chickens in the mornings every morning. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and so I didn't want to say anything earlier, Andrew, but when you were saying that they clay tablets will last forever it's actually funny because they were meant to be disposable um the so clay tablets will survive really well if they're fired if you bake them in an oven but these weren't baked in an oven instead they were shaped and they and you would incise the letters in it and then you just let it dry so that it wouldn't be like goopy anymore then once you got it you would wipe it down with like a wet cloth to erase it and then reuse it and write the response letter. Because oh, once it's an you get it, sketch. yeah, once you get it's it wet, first it, sketch. it like reactivates the clay a little bit, and you can mm-hmm. like wipe it smooth. And it's so, the first etch a sketch. It's so cool. Most of the tablets that we have were essentially were would were either it, it's it's kind of rare to find these unfired clay tablets because like if it gets muddy, then they'll like deteriorate. If if it you know rains in the area, which it usually didn't, but it can happen. Um, they'll well, I mean, and they're they're so soft, so like if anything bumps into them or like they fall, you know. Yeah, but all of the A and Nitzir tablets were fired. Um, and That's how so you fired. And <laughs> That's where that comes from. <laughs> And so a big factor in why we have all of them is that they were fired. And so my theory uh, for this, and it's based hypothesis. on my hypothesis for this, which is based on nothing except for this is what I want the situation to be, is that all of these tablets got fired because somebody burned down his house. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, if okay all of the tablets were in his house and they all needed to be set on fire to preserve, then at some point the house... Yeah. Mm, or he fired them himself to yeah that's what that, that was what i was gonna say if, if, to keep if, them if, as if he's keeping all these things he was keeping them as trophies he was like i i'm gonna show this to all my other grifter buddies and they're gonna laugh so i want to keep these forever mm-hmm. ultimately my favorite part about this entire story is that we know more about this guy than we know about some kings because he was such a shitty businessman. He was so fucking oh, shitty at doing business that we know more about him than we know about, like... Literal royalty? Literal hey, royalty. hold on. It, he had his own house. That's pretty good. And he was really rude to a lot of different people. <laughs> he was rude yeah, enough to where some one of his friends like... told him to stop being rude to people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But he, he owned was, his own house. He 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 had his own business. He, he was an entrepreneur. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so I, I've got a postscript to this story, and this is another tablet that I found. Um, and it's not it's not good enough to go into the main story because it's it's of questionable or unknown provenance. Uh, it, the origin of it is not entirely known, but. You'll 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 quickly learn as to why it's still relevant. Tell a pill, thus says Crawley. Crawley, C R A W L Y is the best translation. It it's literally 
nashalulu, a verb that means to crawl or slither like a snake or demon. Uh, so this is another nickname. They called him Crawly. That's funny. <laughs> so to Aziraphil, when will your time in the West be finished? Abiraham seems very dirty, and I am weary and err. There is a talented Mirsu maker on Wide Street, which is a popular sweet confection in Mesopotamia. Watch out, for I have acquired a new friend. His name is Ea Nitzir, and I may play wickedly with him if you do not return. Come Whoa. quickly. Is Wait, wickedly? Like... <laughs> I think so. It's basically... Yeah, it's basically being sent to this person's boyfriend, being like, "You need to come home soon, or else I'm gonna fuck this Sally dude." And it's here that I just hot, met, dude. He has so much copper, you guys. It's not even. Like <laughs> he told he me house. he has so much copper. He's like, he's one of the top top copper guys. He's a top cop. Mm -hmm. Do you think that and it's here was a pickup artist? Oh, I don't doubt it for a second. He was definitely into peacocking. Um, I'm sure that he had a really fancy hat that he would wear out so that he would stand out in the in the bars. And then he would talk people. loudly about how much copper he has and what good quality it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He'd be like the he'd be like the kind of guy who like is um, really casually. He's like the ancient equivalent of the guy who's casually looking at his uh, bank account while sitting at the bar. He just has like a bag full of copper. <laughs> He he like he'll go he'll go he'll go up to someone like at the bar and just be like, oh, what's up behind you here? And then pull out like a giant ingot of copper. Like, oh sorry. Oh, <laughs> you have, is, is that is that an ingot in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> I've got a pound of silver just over there. Is that a is that a copper ingot in your pants or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> I just said that. No, oh, I'm sorry. Wow, you're not even listening. I well, I guess I wasn't. Just zoned wow. out. Wow. It's my joke now. I would like, I would like to. A, pi a pirate I, uh, walks into a bar. <laughs> can some, can, I would like to speak to the nearest uh, clay tablet writer. I would have a complaint to make about Ash. Mm -hmm. was, that, was that good to you? <laughs> was that good to you? Was that good for you? Did you, did you enjoy that? I'm sorry. I'm really taking, sorry. Taking, taking the humor that I, I guess I just like up. lost consciousness for like two minutes just while you were talking. <laughs> it's fine. It happens all the time. I was, I was drinking my drink and apparently I can drink and listen at the same time. <laughs> so uh, speaking of jokes, actually, um, I've got a couple of more that I really just have to include because no, but it's remarkably similar. So uh, I've, there's a few more cuneiform tablets that I just really like and I want to append to the end of this episode. And so keep listening because they're pretty good. Just some bonus tabs. So bonus tablets, bonus tabs. Exactly. Um, the first one is actually the oldest recorded joke. Um, oh, and it makes just no a sense at all. Walks into a dog walks into a tavern and said, I can't see a thing. I'll open this one. There's there's some there's some linguistic mistranslation that is not making sense. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Let's let's make it up. Let's let's find a solution right here now. A dog walks is, into a tavern, says, important. I can't see anything, I'll open this one. I can't yep, that's see what it says. anything. A window. I'll open this one. Okay. okay, so if he can't see anything, he needs to open something. Is does he? He's wearing an eye patch, and he's blind in the eye that he's not wearing the eye patch. Or yeah, yeah. Is he? Yeah, he's he can't see anything because his eyes are closed, and he says, "I'll." One open of his this eyes one. is blind, and then the eye that works has an eye patch over it, and he's like, "I'll open this one." Because back in the day, a joke oh, is just oh, like, I've got it. I've got like, it. I've got it. A dog with an eye patch on it. That's pretty funny. Uh -huh -huh. <laughs> Copper. No, I got it. I got it. In back in back in those days, the the universal sign for being drunk was to walk around with one eye closed. And so the dog walks into the bar and says, I'll open this one, thus meaning that he only has one eye open, meaning that he's getting drunk, but also it's a joke about how you can't see with your eyes closed. And he's gonna get more drunk. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh yeah, let's fucking party. Okay, so dog dog's ready to party. Party dog. Oh, I, I got I got no no no. Last one right here. Dog okay, the dog walks into the tavern. And he's like, oh, I can't see anything. It's driving me nuts. Hey, oh, hey. got him. Right, next guy. one. Call back to previous episode. Call back to previous episode. <laughs> For anyone confused, you gotta episode. listen to the pirate episode. Yeah, yeah. The, we're, yeah. <laughs> you have to now. It's legally con legally binding contract. You have to listen. The next, the next one is a proverb. It's short. 
the ass farts, the mouth gossips. That's just fact. Tale as old as time. <laughs> Tale as old as time. The mouth eats, the, the butt poops. <laughs> the mouth drinks the tea and it spills the tea. Oh, I fucking love one. that. That's a good one. Please make that into a pillow for me. Thank you. I'll get right what, on that. The ass farts, the mouth gossips. <laughs> no, the tea uh, one. Uh, this next one is basically just an insult tablet that was sent to another person, and nobody really knows why it's so insulting, but it gets pretty homophobic. Oh. No, it's fine, because these aren't my words. Nobody take this out of context. This is... Uh, Sound, soundboard. Soundboard. I've Clip seen it. it. <laughs> Clip it for the soundboard. <laughs> An ancient, I saw this framed on the Tumblr as this ancient Neo-Assyrian diss track framed as a magical incantation offers a series of slurs, some misogynistic and homophobic, against a Mr. Bel-Atir. Mr. Bel-Atir, you two-fold prison fuck toy, two-fold Whoa. soggy, two-fold staring, son of Iba, absent epoch. I don't know what that means, but this next one, shit bucket of a farter. Second rate plan, <laughs> slave of a dead god, house whose star has vanished from the sky, maid Ooh. servant, woman, slave of Lady Balahitu, a beard among fucked out women, Mr. Baby Boy, much maligned man. <laughs> so the so one Mr. About the Mr. Stars, baby boy, you shit Mr. bucket, baby bucket boy. fart house or whatever nope. he said. <laughs> <laughs> dude the, the one about the star is top tier that is great yeah. like you're a star that's been forgotten from the sky that's fucked up and then the one about like shitting what's or the something shit that bucket? was funny what's the shit bucket yeah yeah shit bucket of a farter i love that so much i'm i want i'm gonna use that every day now i just want to call more people a shit bucket honestly I, i've been doing yeah. shit head lately but shit bucket is that's nicer i'm gonna take <laughs> yeah, that yeah it's nice <laughs> okay Mr. Amanapu provided your whitewash, saying, first of all, his house is in shadow, starting at the top. He swore by the Lord, I will not let go until I have fucked him. Let go of what Mr. Amanapu has. Don't chase after what Mr. Tamru has. Stay away from Mr. Anap Amanapite. Keep your crotch away from Mr. Hayimbi. Now I have spoken to you. On account of this, rise up against me. Fight me. Wow. He literally fight said, me. fight like, me. Come at me. Come at me, bro. Literally That's what he says, said. Fight me. It's pretty great. Is he telling him to stop fucking all of those people? I think Is that so. literal or is that metaphorical? That's an ancient diss track. It's just, that's actually, it's like his best friend. And he was just saying, you know, like, what are you doing with your best <laughs> friend? Here, you're like, you, you bitch. bitch. Uh, idiot. You shit bucket. <laughs> you bitch. shit bucket. A beard among fucked out women. <laughs> I also love, I just love Mr. Baby Boy. Mr. Mr. Baby, baby Boy. boy. <laughs> you big man. You big baby boy. That's great. Uh, next one is this, this one's going to be a little, a little lower, a little lower key. This one is an incantation prescribed by a doctor, which uh, is, what? it's, this is, so this is an incantation from a doctor meant to, meant to combat or cure the patient's depression. Mm, you're depressed. So here's a here's a magical words? spell. Yeah, they tried to make people feel better by by writing them down poems. And you basically, it's like, like you a go mantra to the, that you say. You go to the temple and you do a thing, and then you read this incantation, and it should help. Hmm. Uh, so the, these last ones are all incantations. Um, so, so it's, it's like, motivational I'm, posters. Uh, pretty much, or it's like you know, Prayers. It's a prayer. It's a prayer. Yeah. It's like on, on, on like Twitter where people like post a picture of like a, a, a flower field and one of the flowers is different color than all the other flowers. And then they're like, mm -hmm. be different. But then everyone else posts that. So it doesn't make any sense. I think it's more like go see 12 Hail Marys and think about your sins. Oh, that's boring. Mm -hmm. I hate that. Right, it's I call to you, Shamash. Listen to me. Accept my sleepless sighing. Learn swiftly of the suffering that seizes me. I am sluggish, I am sleepless, I am exhausted, I am anxious. I focused on Namrasit, your light, O oh my lord. Shamash, lord of justice, to you I turn. Pay attention to my lifted hands, listen to my speech, listen to me, accept my petition, judge my case, decide my verdict. Oh yeah, that's literally just begging the gods to make you less depressed. That mm -hmm. wasn't as fun, that didn't have any words like shit bucket or... or um baby boy or anything like that so i honestly just I feel just bad like for that, that person because yeah, that probably didn't really sad. help 
It's a little sad, but here we go. We're going to go into the next one, which is a boner prayer. You had me at boner. Yeah, this is an Akkadian incantation designed to produce a rising of the heart, which is a term for successful male sexual performance. Translated here as erection. You don't need Viagra. You just need... This spell. Incantation. May the wind rush and the garden tremble. May the cloud ah. thicken and the shower fall. May my erection be rushing river water. May my penis be a harp string so it cannot slip out of her. Yo, this sounds like <laughs> the inverse of the vagina monologue. And the, the ritual. My yeah. penis is a river. My penis is a waterfall. <laughs> my penis is the wind in the sky and the, and the dirt in the ground. My penis is It is the is volcanic a eruption that creates life amongst around it. And so there's a ritual on this tablet. If you want to try this at home, take a harp string, tie three knots in it, recite the incantation seven times, and then tie it around your left and right hands. So read the boner poem and put yourself into bondage. Pretty I need much. To <laughs> buy a harp. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, this last one is um, an incantation to the goddess Ishtar, who is the goddess of sexuality. It's kind of a reductive way to refer to her, but in this case, she is the goddess of sexuality. Uh, This is an incantation in which a male prostitute is asking Ishtar for help in attracting male clients. Hmm. Okay. Trying to generate some business. It's like like copy dealership. dealership. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Except it's for, you know, dudes. Yeah, for dudes. Ishtar of the nations, most heroic of the goddesses, this is your sanctum. Be happy and rejoice. Come, enter our house. <clears throat> Let your handsome bed partner enter with you, your seducer or your temple boy. May my lips be sugar oh. syrup. May my hands be sensual. Oh. May the lips of my hole be honeyed lips. Oh. <laughs> Just <Wow>. like birds. <laughs> That's a lot to take in. Yeah. Just like birds flutter over a snake as it emerges from its pit, may people fight each other over me. From the sanctum Damn. of Ishtar or the abode of Ninlil, even from the herds of Ningizida. Seize him and bring him to me, so I can please him. If he is far away, may he return. If he is upset, may he come back. May his heart come back to me good as gold. Just like the sky fertilizes the earth so that plants become abundant, so may I overflow with my bounty. I love that. I thought that was great. Yeah. Uh, uh, really, I, like, genuinely, like, I, I want to be hot shit. I am hot shit. And I will prove it to you. Let the, if you build it, they will come. If you build it, if the boner comes, they will indulge. Is Assyrian uh, creation myths the one where the sky god jizzes all over the ground and that's how life was created? That's Egyptian. Ah. Wow. Um, And that's why, I don't know if it was annually or just periodically, the pharaoh would jerk off into the Nile. Mm. Um, I don't like that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you've never, I've never jerked, jerked off into a of river. Come on, no. y'all. I've you think you're better Nile. than me? You think you're better than the pharaoh? If if I ever come to the Nile, <laughs> yeah, then like I'm, I mean, if I'm there and I'm like, well, that's a that's a real sexy river. But I've never found a river sexy enough to jack off in. <laughs> you house whose star has vanished from the sky? You think you're better than the pharaoh? Your seed fight has me. never been Fucking plastered against me about the rocks of the Euphrates. Rise up against me. Bet you won't. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. Is that it? Is that all you got? That's all I got. What was everyone's favorite? What was the favorite thing you, you learned? Shit bucket is my favorite thing that I learned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite thing that I learned was that A. Anasir was the guy from the Music Man. That's my... That's my thought on this, is that he was, he was that guy. He was, I forgot his name again, but he was the guy from the music band. He went and he came into town. He flaunted all this great copper, which is funny because copper is made to, you know, is used to make musical instruments. So it tracks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he was like, 76 pounds of copper and I'm <laughs> going to sell it to you. And I'll give you a bunch of silver on the way out. And then he booked it. <laughs> a boy's band. Uh, Professor Harold Hill. Harold Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Harold Hill. In the saga of learning about Anne Itzir, and then there was just some random other tablet of some person being like, 
hey, if you don't come home, I'm going to fuck Ian at Seer. <laughs> like, not only was he stealing people's oh, yeah. silver, but he was stealing their wives. He's hot as fuck, dude. Yeah. He's so hot. It could also, I mean, this is Crawley. I don't know if Crawley is a male name or a female name. Like, Ian we don't is here, get, you know, we hey, can't, he, uh, he, he fucking partied, man. That's all yeah, I know. We, we can't uh we can't put our modern perceptions of sexuality on people in the past. So true. I think I think it's cool though that that's like a text message it's just like <laughs> hey I'm, I'm going to break up with you for this fucking I love because if you put it in the context of most people don't read it like read and write you had to hire someone or get your person to do yeah, it but like, you're like hey, you just send I them need all to the tell way. my friend like yeah like hey could you tell my buddy I'm going to fuck this dude if he doesn't come, come back <laughs> can you cross through enemy territory to tell this guy that he needs to come back or i'm gonna fuck somebody else like <laughs> oh yeah thanks yeah be hot It'll be yeah hot. and specifically the translation notes that i saw he says i am weary and er the weary is a way that's kind of like it there's a tinge to, of horniness to it like i'm <laughs> like i'm like there's nobody for me here i'm lonely yeah mm. I'm missing you and it's here and er you should come back Ooh, no, it was, me. But it was also it was to a zero appeal. Oh, so, sorry. They met it. A and it's here in her. Nah. I love that. Oh, yeah. that was uh that that was our episode on ancient uh Yelp reviews, just specifically for <laughs> A and it's here. That was great, Zach. Thank you for dumping on us. This is a, an epistolary story of how A and it's here was a bitch. <laughs> oh yeah, it was fantastic. So thank you for joining us for this episode. I hope you enjoyed thank it. You. And we will see you next week, next Wednesday. Hump day, dump day. Hump day, hump day, dump day. Thanks for listening. Uh, like, like and follow. Uh, tell your yeah. friends. Send us an email at get dumped done, get dumped on podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> and that's it. See you guys later. Thank you. Okay. Bye. bye. Ash and Zach are super smart. They went to college and learned a bunch of stuff. And Bo and Andrew didn't go to college because that's the way life goes sometimes. What happens when you put them together and you try to make them learn? Grab your friends. Let's listen together on Get Dumped On and Info Dump Podcast. <laughs> bye bye bye. 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 Bye.